Hi guys and welcome to this mutual fund corner special of our YouTube edition. Today we are going to talk about a very hot topic that is the mid and small cap funds. We've all been talking about how money is rushing into this space. People are really looking outside of the index to try and you know generate big returns. So, so to really discuss the opportunities and the risks that really you know lie with this space, we are joined now by Koshal Bhagi. He's a personal finance consultant and is very well positioned to advise you on this space. Koshal, thanks a lot for joining us and taking out the time for this special show. You know, this is my first question that we've seen such a trend of money moving into these kinds of funds, into the small cap funds, the mid cap funds. We have a micro cap fund that's launching soon. A, do you think this trend is likely to continue and this is something that we're going to see for a while now? Well, first of all, good afternoon and thanks for having me on your show. I think before we get into this, let, let's just sort of explore one concept before, right? Because I guess this is a pretty free-flowing chat that, that you said we could have. Yeah. Firstly, when people invest money, whether for the short term or the long term, I think the objective is to make money straight away, right? Nobody likes to invest and see their portfolio lose value straight away because then you think it's a bad decision. Mm -hmm. And I think if you ask anybody, right, would you like to put money when markets are rising so you can make money straight away, the answer will be yes. Because investors don't like to lose money beyond a certain point. You know, I went and I had a look at some clip recently and there was about a lady who bought 100 shares of a company and she was down 30 rupees and, oh my God, a blame game has begun, right? So I think we should establish that money tends to come into the market when the market is hot. Mm. Because the lure of making or the allure of making money immediately is a very, very heady feeling. Yeah. Now, coming to the point that you asked is, does this hold true for the categories within the market space as well. And I've taken out some data uh, for this show. You know, I looked at the returns of the last one year and three years of your large cap Nifty, the mid cap 150 and the small cap 250. And in the last one year and three years, what you're saying is that in the large cap space, last one year has given 20% returns. I'm talking about as of Friday, mm. but your small cap and mid cap have given 27 and 30% returns, right? Even if you look at the last three-year data, Nifty has done phenomenally well. It's given you 25% CAGR because I guess last three years is also just after the COVID, you know, two, three months that we had over there. But 24% returns versus around 35 to 40% in the mid cap and small cap space. So definitely, I think if you want to look at this market reward performance, you've seen in the last one year around 7% more inflows that have come into the large cap. Mid cap has been close to 20%. And small cap has been close to 30%, right? So I think coming to the point, it's true that performance gets rewarded and people like to invest in something that is hot and small cap and mid cap and even large cap. I think everything's hot right now. All the indices are trading close to their market highs. So it has been a good run. It's been good reward for people who have remained invested in the last couple of years period, right? How long is this going to continue? I guess that's a golden question. You know, market are, as I said, at all time highs. People are making money. It's very hard to stop that. But everything is fine right now. Mid cap, small cap, large cap. So control your emotions, but enjoy the rewards as well, right? I think you would say. Oh, absolutely. And I'm glad you said that, you know, people like to make money right away because you have a lot of people telling you, get into the market, keep the patience, but that's really easier said than done, right? Especially for a new investor who's experienced in the market cycles for the first time, it may not be that easy. But Kushan, tell me, if someone is looking to get into this space, okay, they want to, you know, put their money in a mid-cap fund, small-cap fund, how do they really go about it? Because there are so many on offer. So are there some criteria that you would recommend they go through, perhaps, you know, do a check on the fund house, on the, you know, size of the scheme, anything that you could recommend on that? Yeah, of course. But I think before you decide which particular scheme for which particular AMC you want to get into in the mid-cap and small-cap space, it's good to answer and ask the question, at least your, your, your viewer should, is should you be getting into mid-caps and small-caps in the first place, right? And when I, when I say, say that, if I look at mid-caps, and I'll start mid-caps again, if you look at the data for the last one year, three years, five years, even ten years, mid-caps, and I'm talking purely about the index, it has outperformed the Nifty 50 or the large caps across all these time frames, right? And that's really surprising, actually, if you want to sort of think about it. And again, I'm talking only about the indices. If you then look at schemes within mid caps and large caps, there are more actively managed mid caps that are outperforming their benchmarks yeah. than actively managed large cap schemes that are able to outperform their benchmarks. 
right? So today what's happening is many leading companies in the mid-cap space, you have the largest tire company, the largest hotel chain, the largest apparel company. These are all in the mid-cap stocks as well. So I'm actually of the opinion now that mid-cap should be a part of an investor's core portfolio. I think we've reached that stage where it's no longer should you have mid-caps as part of your core portfolio, you should have mid-caps as part of your core portfolio, right? Having said that, mid-caps are obviously much more volatile than large caps. So depending on the makeup of the investor, whether you're someone new to the market, of course, if you're somebody more experienced, you might be better at handling volatility because, again, if mid-caps and small-caps are offering you better returns, you're only going to get those returns if you are going to stay invested through the life of the fund or, you know, the life of the investment till you reach your goal or a substantial period of time. So I think in the mid-cap space, there is still a lot of volatility. But there are strategies and approaches that you can use, like rebalancing, etc., to manage the risk of mid-caps a little bit. When it comes to small caps, one must understand that the drawdowns in small caps are still pretty large. If you talk about, you know, 2008, which is quite some time away, and the Nifty fell, what, close to 60% at that time, your mid-cap and small caps fell over 70%, right? If you talk about COVID, where I think the Nifty fell close to around 38%, your mid-cap indices fell 45 plus percent and your small cap fell 60 percent more. So I think when the, when, when you know the fall is so high, the pain is much more. And when the fall is so high, it takes that much longer to sort of recover as well because, you know, that's, that's the simple math of it. But I think it's, it's again, it's, it's easier said than done. Do you have the volatile, do you have the stomach to remain invested in small caps? Where I actually think timing in small caps makes a lot more difference, right? You need to enter at the correct time. You need to get out at the correct time. So I don't think that small cap is an all-weather fund at this point in time. I think mid-caps definitely are. But again, I said if, if, if you want to invest in small caps, it's imperative that you get in at the right time. And when I say get in at the right time, it typically means after small caps have taken a big hit. But it's very hard to invest after you've just taken a big hit because you need a combination of both cash and courage yeah. to sort of invest at that time, right? So I think mid-caps, definitely, yes. Small caps, a bit more opportunistic. If you're an experienced investor, certainly you can look at small cap funds. But mid-caps, I think it's time for all investors to give mid-caps, you know, a reasonable place on their portfolio right now. Okay, give mid-caps some space. Uh, Kushal, since you mentioned small caps, there's a micro-cap fund that is launching, right? Motilal right. is bringing a micro-cap fund, but this is an index fund. It's a passively managed fund. And we've all seen that in the broader markets, the actively managed funds, of course, do better, right? In most cases, in mid-caps, small caps. Uh, your uh -huh. thoughts on this, what, would you recommend someone put their money into this? Well, again, so I think you're right. In the mid-caps and small caps space, there have been actively managed funds that can do better because... You know, like the large cap space where you're straight jacketed a lot, the only hundreds of stocks, hundred companies where you have to invest eighty percent of your money. The the game is much larger, the universe is much larger. So in mid caps and small cap, at least there is a scope for somebody to outperform, right? I think still only fifty percent of funds are outperforming, but at least there is a playing field where you can outperform. As far as the micro cap is concerned, it's a wait and watch as far as I'm concerned. You know, I read a stat somewhere that in the last five years, and this is slightly dated, but 50% of small cap companies fail to exist over a period of five years. And when I talk about the drawdowns, as we've just spoken about, where small caps are falling 50, 60, 70% even, micro caps are going to be that much more volatile, micro caps are going to be that much more riskier. So yes, there may be a little bit more risk over there, or a little bit more reward over there, but there is certainly a lot of risk as well. It's an index fund. So that's interesting. You expect a lot more churn. So how easily are they going to be able to rebalance? Because, you know, I think SEBI has a 2% limit on tracking error as well. These companies are very under-researched. Quality of managed, quality of promoters. The one has to sort of think about. The volumes traded are so low. Can this be a large AUM product in the time to come? And I think that's what people are sort of going to be keeping an eye on. So, again, if you're a retail investor, I think, you know, small caps anyways are that risky. Micro caps that much more riskier. You could sort of stick with your regular caps as well. But I still think micro caps are more the purview currently of PMSs. Yeah. So, if you are at H&I, Ultra H&I, you have big money, you have that risk-taking ability and risk-taking capital to be deployed in it then I think you can still go over there as a PMS route. But 
you know, the can the, the can has been opened. So you want to sort of you want to sort of see how this plays out because of all these points that I've just mentioned. So listen, if they pull it off, it's fantastic. But I think at least for me, it's it's still a wait and watch at this point. Okay, that is on the micro cap fund. Kushal, just one question before you know I wrap up on this. The other way to get uh, exposure to the broader market could be by looking at a sector fund or a thematic fund as well, right? Because these funds have also been seeing a lot of money come in. Of course, this comes with its own set of risks itself. Uh, you are also kind of taking a bet on a pocket of the market, which I don't know how many investors you know might be in a position to do. You have to be at least fairly well aware of how the market works. But uh, your call on whether you would look at a sector or thematic fund versus, say, a mid-cap, small-cap kind of fund? It's, again, it's an evergreen question, right? And I think, see, sectoral funds are different if you ask conviction. If you have a bet on a particular sector, then sure, you can go and take that exposure. But I think it's very important to have a get-in and a get-out time, okay? So again, for more experienced investors, that's where sectoral funds are. The bank funds is something that I'm still grappling with a little bit. Um, I think after the steady classification of schemes that happened in 2018 where, you know, each category was defined, you can only have one sort of fund per category, except for thematic, right? So thematic is a theme where you've seen a lot of sort of launches, especially in the last few years, come in. IPOs or NFOs, rather, as we call it now, is a great way to pick up money, and the public is also looking for something new to invest. But you know, I, I'd like to flip this around and sort of get your view as well to say that if you have a fund, a house, which is launching a scheme on a particular sector or a particular theme, and if it's going to be very short-lived, then you should be able to see the same action of that particular sector, of that particular scheme come into your main schemes as well. Why doesn't a flexi-cap fund, for example, you know, if somebody is launching a defense fund, I'm just giving an random example, your flexi-cap fund, does it, does it seeing a lot more of that? And I'm taking FlexiCap, especially because it's an I can go anywhere sort of fund, right? So, I mean, that that's really something to be cons uh, to sort of think about. I know some thematic funds have been doing pretty well in the last couple of years. But again, I think thematic and sectoral, unless you know exactly why you're getting in, why when you're getting out, I think mid caps, small caps, large caps, and flexi caps, for that matter, are a better place to go and talk the money. All right, got that. Kushal, thank you very much for joining us today and taking us through all of these questions. You know, makes a lot of sense at a time like this when we have been seeing so much action and so much interest in the broader market. So thank you for taking us through all of the opportunities that exist in the space, but also the risks. With that, we're going to wind down on this special edition of Mutual Fund Corner. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll be back very soon.